Our region's business is sponsored by PNC for the achiever in you. China may have to push through some headwinds on its way to becoming the world's largest economy, but it is going to get there. And for businesses in our region and across the country, that makes it an important market to crack. And many are quick to learn that doing business in China is not quite like doing business in the West. There are differences and they impact strategy and management. Daniel Joseph sums it all up in a new book, The China Learning Curve, Critical Differences. He's been doing business in China for more than 20 years, and welcome, good to see you. Thanks, Bill, thanks for having me. Yeah, welcome back on the show. Yeah, it, it's a real different take. I mean, you think about doing business in China mechanically. How do I crack the export market? How do, where do I set up a building? That kind of stuff. Uh, uh, what you, the, you contend in the book, those are really the wrong questions to be asking first. Right. China has evolved to the point where it's, it's no longer just factory to the world. You know, for most companies, if they are sourcing in China, and a lot of companies are, it's a critical part of their supply chain. But increasingly, companies are turning to China because they want to grow, you know, to, 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 to grow their business. And that's really a tougher management challenge. So really, there's never been a time previously in history where we've had to engage in an emerging market, a developing economy, so intensely you know, building staff, learning about the local market. So the challenge is, in a sense, China is getting easier administratively to a certain extent, but the management challenge is increasing because the bar is rising. Well, and now you're producing in China for China, which is different than just hiring a Chinese company to ship you stuff, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we're producing here for China. You're producing a lot of companies that we're producing in China and exporting are now taking those products and selling them in China. Okay. So it's the other side of the business, the more complicated side of the business. Uh, the management challenge grows which means the management uh, issues that are unique to China, cultural issues, lack of experience and staff, become more important. At the same time, as I always like to say, you never say to some, a businessman never says, well, I'm successful because I don't understand my customer, or I don't understand my, the marketplace. So you have to, if you're gonna sell in China, understand the customer, understand the competitors, the marketplace, all of that takes time and effort, particularly when you factor in the differences, what I call the critical differences in the economic structure, the culture that make it difficult to interpret you know, customer behavior and how the market will, will react to your product. Sure, well, and, and the subtitle of the book is The Critical Differences, and obviously we only have a few minutes to talk about this, but a couple of examples that come to mind. When you think about the culture, what is critically different that a business needs to be thinking about to get into China? Well, there are a any number of things you can select from, but probably the thing that trips up companies the most is all emerging markets have an issue with the rule of law. Hmm. Okay, the rule of law just isn't firmly established. And as I like to point out, you know, we were the same way 150 years ago. That's why they called it the wild, wild west. So the rule of law is getting better in China, but it's not where it is here. So that impacts not only things like intellectual property and contracts that you might have with customers, but even it's, it's a cultural phenomenon that relates to how people work, you know, hmm. following internal processes and procedures and things like that. So it is, if you don't have experience in that environment, it's difficult uh, to recognize how you should adjust your management system. A quick example, we had a company this last summer, large distributor of food products in China, have a major problem because their Shanghai distribution center uh, was found by the Chinese government to have mislabeled meat and shipped expired meat. And in the, then they had, they had to admit to this, and in the aftermath of the investigation, it was revealed that they had that, uh, unit they had there in Shanghai was managed very independently. Hmm. There were no expats over there, very little engagement with the, the home office. From a cultural point of view, I'm not sure that's putting enough effort into shaping, you have to put the effort in to shape the local culture of your operation in China. Well, and but that becomes the question. I mean, you have a, companies here in the United States and operating around the world, there, there is a kind of sort of a corporate culture. China's a very different culture, but can you introduce your corporate culture? Can, uh, are, are they teachable, I guess? Is oh, absolutely. Is as I like to say to um, clients and, and companies relative to China, they're coming our way. Cultural change is all, already happening there. They have to to move the economy along. That's part of it. They need, they need more sophisticated management techniques. They need to treat their employees better if they want to get more productivity out of them. So when you work with the Chinese, you see this. But you know, it'll take, it takes decades to do that. Hmm. So you have to kind of 
meet local staff very often halfway. One of the things you have to do is figure out, well, just how far along kind of the improvement process or this getting more sophisticated in their management approach is your local staff and then help bring them the rest of the way. It's a mistake to assume that they're not going to improve or change, mm -hmm. that, they're, that the, the Chinese are going to do business one way and will, will never be similar to us. At the same time, it's a mistake to say, well, they're just like us right now. Right. You've got to find the middle point and then as a, if you're managing, you have to kind of lead the organization towards the kind of corporate culture you want without expecting change overnight. Wow. Well, a lot more. One great example of what the book is packed with. It's called The China Learning Curve, Critical Differences. Uh, Dan Joseph, thanks for, the, thanks for the snapshot. Thanks for having me, Bob. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. And we'll be back in a minute with a little dollars and cents. Stay with us.